Hi, Gemini. It's me, Stormy, and here is your horoscope for January 2018. Happy New Year. Let's do this. That's pretty much how I'm feeling. So before we get into this forecast, I hope hope you will come and join me Gemini for my brand new feature I've got going all of 2018 it's $3 Thursdays which I'm totally excited about the third Thursday of every month I will be teaching a live but private session with question and answer on an, any given astrology topics you'll know the topic ahead of time in January we're going to be talking about business astrology business timing in astrology so if you're wanting to launch a business end a business transition your business buy something sell something whatever it is we're going to talk about different aspects and I'll teach you about the timing so grab your chart, get signed up, come learn with me. It's um, a much more intimate setting, so you'll be able to ask questions and get answers right away. Really good time. So I hope you will join me all year long. You can join me for one session, five sessions, two sessions, or you can buy the whole year. I've put both options down below in the description box. All right, Gemini, so this month is a month of moons, which means we have got a month of change coming. Now for you, though, I have to tell you, looking at all of these different aspects that I'm seeing here, I feel like all of these moons for you, because you've done so much work on relationships, actually brings a little bit of a sense of healing to you, I feel like. Now, I do feel like the lunar eclipse that happens at the end of the month, because it is an emotional reset, is something that may be helping you filter out some leftover emotions or some new emotions that you're needing to process and move forward with. But overall, the moons this month for you, I actually feel like bring a lot of clarity and a lot of healing, especially because you've done so much around relationships, which has made it so you've had to do um, changes around yourself as well. So let's talk about this right at the beginning of the month on the first we have the full moon happening in cancer now this is actually going to be lighting up your second house so the full moon says something has to be ended acknowledged or adjusted there will be a change now the second house is yes it's the house of earned income the way that you make money the way you value the things in your life your material possessions things like that so with the full moon here could you be losing possessions could you um could you have finances just kind of dry up and you're like excuse me what happened yeah absolutely you certainly could have that happening but i feel like again this is a lot more positive um full moon for you because it's also making a connection over here to mars and jupiter who are in conjunction and neptune as well who's actually over here in your 10th house so this is actually i think a very nice configuration for you where instead you may be changing your value and actually having a little bit more money come your way. It's almost like it immediately ends this idea that you've had or this pay grade that you've had and you get to come into a different direction. Or you find value in some way differently um, about doing what you're doing in the world. Maybe you value your career differently. Maybe you're like, I'm quitting this job, right? And then you start doing something that you really love, or maybe you keep this job, but you start a hobby that you really love. Whatever it is, I feel like in terms of value, this actually has a lot of shiny aspects that can be positive for you. It could also be a time too where you have to relook at your money and you have to rebudget because some things are different in your life. So just keep that plan, all right? <laughs> now here on the second, we've got Uranus coming direct it's going to be in the sign of Aries so for you sitting here in the 11th house this is the friendship house right with Uranus being direct when he was retrograde you may have found Gemini that you had issues in your friendships you may have found that friendships had to die off in a way so that they could have different structure around them right all of these different relationships social relationships might have needed to get really different for you and what it might have looked like gemini is that they had to seem like they got really really bad first and that is very uranian energy but he's bringing inspiration he's getting these relationships these social things these long-range goals out of a rut and now that uranus will be coming direct he's ready to move these things forward he helped you make some changes right now you can move these new relationships these new plans these new group activities these new social things forward in a way that's actually very positive for you some of which may include um, making a contact with this income house for you right if you're willing to let new people and new structures into your life um, you could definitely have some financial benefit from that as well 
Now here on the 12th, we have got Mercury joining an absolutely loaded eighth house for you. We've got Mercury up there now, which is our planet of communication, decision making, thinking, siblings, um, short distance travel, okay? Those kinds of things are happening with the Mercury energy. But he's up there now with Pluto, Saturn, who we know is not playing ha around. Saturn's just starting to work on your eighth house. Venus, hi Venus, and the sun. So a very packed eighth house. Now again, for you this month, looking at all of these energies running through here, you could actually be having an influx of conversation about money coming into your world that you didn't earn right? You could also be having a lot of conversation about money or finances in your world connected to other people. Are you paying for someone else? Is someone else paying for you? Are you having to factor these things into your world, right? Are you recombining or are you combining incomes or something like that? It's a very intimate energy. It gets very busy, but there's a high level of responsibility with whatever is coming to this eighth house for you. Whether this be you're taking it to the next level, you're ready to have some sex. That's very good. Yay. Good for you. Um, um, you're ready to start therapy. You're ready to um, pay back and pay off your debts. You're ready to have a house full of people and start taking care of everybody. Whatever it is, there is a solid recombining of your energy with another. And this is about making it solid. This is about being responsible. This is about being honest. This is about bringing maturity to the table. We know that because Saturn's in the mix. Now, on the 16th, we've got the new moon happening in Capricorn, and this is also in your eighth house. So yes, bringing brand new beginnings at the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention for what we want going forward. But I feel like this could be a time where something really good is happening for your partner or for someone outside of you, and you're able to get the benefit from it, right? Because this could also be maybe your financial aid comes through for the upcoming term, right? Whatever it is, some source outside of you could actually be getting a benefit and it kind of helps you come up as well. Now, at the beginning of the month, you were doing a lot of focus in this cancer energy on your value. So whatever it is that you're interacting with, it's kind of showing you to bring your value up, right? Celebrate value in some way, shape, or form that later turns into financial benefit for sure. Now, on the 19th, we've got Venus moving into Aquarius. On the 21st, we've got the Sun moving into Aquarius. So we have this very harmonizing um essential burning magnetic energy moving into a ninth house space. So this is the house of faith, first of all, right? Like you can have new faith. You got to bring some new faith to the table. You could have new teachers coming into your world. You could be teaching something new. Um, there could be legal things. This is an energy where legal things could be going on. And most of it looks very favorable with these two energies, of course, depending on your chart. It could also be a time where something's changing in education. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you've got a shift in some kind of educational something in your house. Maybe you're studying something new. Maybe somebody in your house is studying something new. But whatever it is, this ninth house shift being about publishing, broadcasting, education, higher mind, all of these things, things international, things foreign. It's certainly a time, Gemini, where you're going to start broadcasting some aspect into your, of your world into the world much differently. On the 28th, we've got Mars moving into Sagittarius. This is action energy, so we're going to take action here. Now, Sagittarius is your opposite sign, so we know that this sits in your seventh house. There's going to be movement, action, life um, being brought to your relationship zone, and this is not just your romantic relationships. Yes, you and somebody else could be combining finances or doing things like that, so the nature of that relationship is certainly changing, but you could take a promotion this month, right? And then you change status, that creates a different kind of partnership at work. Um, Gemini, you could also have something with a friendship start to look different. But whatever it is, it's going to require you to take action. Mars wants to move, wants to do something. So you will be taking action in partnerships, that's for sure. Now, as we end the month on the 31st, we've got this full moon lunar eclipse happening at 11 degrees of Leo. For you, this rocks your third house. And I love this because this creates this reset, this shift in perspective, this shift in communication for you. I always feel like because Leo is so very playful, maybe you're being more expressive. Maybe you're realizing you have to have more fun. You got to chill out a little bit, Gemini, right? Maybe you're realizing because this energy is so closely linked to our asteroid series, Maybe there's all these women you haven't actually been talking to. Ceres is the energy of women. Where is your communication with women in your life? Are you tapping in? Are you having fun? Are you celebrating women, right? 
So this could be a very interesting energy. And I also think for some of you, this will have to do with communications with either siblings or with close women relationships for you as well. But this is a wonderful energy too if you have been working on study, writing a book, writing projects, any of these kinds of things, research, this lunar eclipse, resetting those emotions, giving you a new perspective on things is nothing but helpful for you as we get ready to end this month. And I mean, moving forward, I really have to tell you, no matter what happens this month, Gemini, you have done such good dang work on your relationships that I feel like over the next six months to a year, your communication in, on, and around your relationships gets so much more healthy that it sets the stage and the foundation for some amazing things through the rest of 2018. All right, Geminis, I love you so much. I look forward to seeing you in $3 Thursday. So get signed up because yes, space is limited. And I will see you in those sessions talking about all kinds of astrological goodies. So grab your chart and come learn with me. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If there's anything else I can do for you, come visit me at stormygrace.com. Bye guys.